You always look at base rates. How many people in a society are violent? And it's around 3%, I think, last time I looked at the numbers. And so then the reason that's an interesting thing is because, I mean, you want to know that is because if someone then has brain damage uh, and they carry out a violent act, are you going to be able to really tie the violence to their, their particular brain damage? And you want to know how many people with that kind of lesion become violent, let's say. So uh, it turns out that the base rate is 3%. And if you have a frontal lobe lesion, which supposedly disinhibits your behavior and makes you uh, inappropriate, and it only increases violence to 13%. It's, it's not a switch that if you have a lesion there, you, you uh, will be violent. And the reason that's important, because in this law context that we were talking about, you don't want to be giving license to people who have a frontal lobe lesion and say, guess what? You can finally settle some debts out there and you'll get, <laughs> uh, you'll get off free because you know, we now know that that's just not, not how it works. So the, 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 the calculations that go into violence uh, are complex. Uh, so you look at it, just look at the base rate. It's 3% in the general culture. And then there's things that can increase the percentage, but no one seems to know a thing that just makes it an absolute case that someone will be violent. It's clearly the case that people respond to messages. And one of the kind of relevant and powerful ways that this happens is people respond to messages about what's expected of them in terms of what group they belong to or what kind of person they are, even when they're not aware they're responding to this. So one example is there's a cultural expectation that girls are less good at math. And there's also a cultural expectation that Asian people are, more good, are better at math. And so you can take the same group of Asian girls and have them do a math test. And before they do it, you can just, without them really even noticing it, make them think of themselves as girls or make them think of themselves as Asian people. And depending on which message you've given them, how should they think of themselves, they do 15 point be points better on the math test when they're thinking of themselves as Asians and when they're thinking of themselves as girls. So that's not a difference in their capacity. It's the same girls. But they're responding, even without noticing it, to a message about what we expect of them, given how we're thinking of them and therefore how they're thinking of themselves. This is a very important thing to know when you're a teacher. But I think also the lesson can be expanded all over the case. There are groups of people in society who are being given the message, we expect you to be violent, and groups of people who are being given the message, we don't expect you to be violent. And they might be being given that message not only explicitly in some cases, but also in ways they're not aware of. And everything we know suggests that that could be one contributing factor to how they eventually behave.